Welcome to Esquire Group's latest video. My name is Jimmy Sexton, LLM. I am the founder and CEO of Esquire Group. Today we're going to be talking about pre-immigration planning because there's almost nothing worse than you can do for your tax situation than to immigrate to the United States without planning. Uh, the U.S. has some pretty thorough tax laws, let's call them that, and becoming a U.S. tax resident can have some pretty substantial tax consequences and without pre-immigration planning you're going to be subject to all of them which you may not like so today we're going to be talking about one technique that is a valuable pre-immigration planning tool and that is a drop-off trust but before we get into that as always i'm going to do a little cya disclaimer this presentation is prepared for education purposes only this presentation is not legal or tax advice, nor is it to be construed as such. Each individual circumstances are different. You should seek legal and or tax advice to address any specific questions you may have. All right, let's get into it. So before we talk about a drop-off trust and how it can help in pre-immigration planning, I want to talk a little bit about what taxes you're going to become subject to should you become a U.S. tax resident. So first, U.S. tax residents are liable for income tax on their worldwide income. Now, a U.S. person is a U.S. citizen, a green card holder, and somebody who meets the substantial presence test. So a lot of people believe simply by getting a work visa or something like that, you automatically become a U.S. tax resident. That's not true. It's based on the amount of time you spend in the United States. This is called the substantial presence test. Now, the way the substantial presence test works is if you wanted to find out if you meet the substantial presence test for 2021, you would add up all of the days you've spent in the United States in 2021. If that number is at least 31, then you add up all the days you spent in the US in 2021, a third of the days from 2020, and a sixth of the days from 2019. If that number equals 183 or more, you're considered a US tax resident. And again, U.S. tax residents liable for U.S. income tax on their worldwide income. Uh, you also may become subject to U.S. transfer taxes, meaning gift and state taxes. Gift taxes apply when you give a gift to somebody. Estate taxes apply when you die. Now, though these apply differently to U.S. citizens and people who are just U.S. tax residents, meaning permanent residents, green card holders, or those meeting the substantial presence test. U.S. citizens are subject to U.S. gift and estate taxes on their worldwide assets. So they give a gift of an asset anywhere in the world, it's going to be subject to gift tax. When they die, it's their worldwide estate that's subject to U.S. gift tax. Permanent residents and those meeting the substantial presence test, it depends on whether they are domiciled in the U.S. And this is a little bit of a tricky concept for a lot of people to understand that there is a difference between residence and domicile, okay? Residence is where you currently live. Domicile is best described as where your home is. So a perfect example of this is maybe you have somebody who is an Austrian citizen, grew up in Austria, lives in Austria, and they move to the United States for a three-year work contract. They are a U.S. resident during those three years, presumably because they meet the substantial presence test, but after the three years, they intend to go back to Austria. So Austria is really their home, so they're Austrian domiciled, but U.S. tax resident. So but if somebody, listen, I know green card holders that have lived in the U.S. over 50 years, they're clearly going to be U.S. domiciled, right? So you have to analyze the persons. If they're not a U.S. citizen, you have to analyze the residency and domicile issues separately because they're not always the same. So permanent residents and those meeting the substantial presence test, uh, who are not domiciled in the U.S., who are only resident in the United States, are only liable for gift and estate taxes on 
U.S. assets, okay? And they don't have any lifetime gift tax exclusion on gifts of U.S. assets, so the gift tax applies from dollar one. They get a $60,000 estate tax exclusion. Everything over that is subject to the U.S. estate tax, which goes up to 40%. Again, that only applies uh, to U.S. assets if they are not domiciled in the U.S. If they are domiciled in the U.S., then they have the same lifetime gift and estate tax exclusion that U.S. citizens have, which is currently $11.7 million. Uh, as most of you know, this is likely going to go down under the Biden administration because they're, you know, anti-wealth. Um, so let's talk a little bit about pre-immigration planning. Without pre-immigration planning, uh, it is possible for a U.S. person, for, for a non-U.S. person who immigrates to the United States and who becomes domiciled there um, to subject all of their worldwide income and assets to U.S. income taxes, gift taxes, and estate taxes. And obviously, if at all possible, you want to try to avoid subjecting as much of your income and assets as possible to U.S. taxation. So with proper pre-immigration planning, uh, it's possible to save to be U.S. residents and domiciliaries and their heirs a significant amount of tax. And as mentioned previously, a drop-off trust is one of those tools that can help shield assets from transfer taxes, meaning gift and estate taxes, for sure, and possibly even income taxes, depending on when the trust was set up. So a typical drop-off trust structure works like this. Um, a prior to immigrating to the United States, so prior to becoming a U.S. person, the to be U.S. resident or domiciliary would settle a, a, an offshore trust, a, a foreign trust, so basically a non-U.S. trust, with their foreign assets. I'm not going to get into the details of it, but it's generally not recommended to put U.S. assets in the drop-off trust. Uh, we would only want to put this future immigrants, foreign assets into the foreign drop-off trust. The foreign drop-off trust is a foreign irrevocable trust. Uh, the settler, meaning the person transferring assets to it, can be one of the beneficiaries along with their family members and whoever else they select. It can be a multi-generational structure, right? So this isn't something that where the settler dies, the assets have to be distributed. Rather, he can make hit future generations automatically become beneficiaries of this trust, which can have some, some benefits that needs to be analyzed on a case-by-case -case basis. And the trust, the drum off trust can have a protector or guardian. We definitely recommend uh, using a professional trustee for the, for the drop off trust, uh, but there's no reason why a settler or, 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 or one of the family members of the settler couldn't act as a protector with the ability to remove and replace the trustee in the event the trustee was not acting in accordance or not administering the trust in accordance with the trust agreement. Now, if properly structured, the assets that are transferred to the drop-off trust prior to the person becoming a U.S. tax resident are going to be shielded from U.S. gift and estate taxes. So basically, if you have somebody who's planning on becoming a U.S. tax resident or domiciliary, and prior to doing so, they set up a foreign trust and transfer all their foreign assets to it, I mean, it could be a hundred million dollars. It could be way over any exclusion in the United States. They can then become, for argument's sake, a U.S. domiciliary. And from the time they become a U.S. domiciliary, they're still going to have that lifetime gift tax exclusion to take advantage of that's currently $11.7 million. And the assets that are in the drop-off trust aren't going to reduce that because the assets they put in the drop-off trust are outside of the new U.S. resident or domiciliary's estate. So placing assets in a drop-off trust before becoming a U.S. resident or domiciliary is going to protect those assets from U.S. transfer taxes, which is obviously a huge advantage. If the drop-off trust is set up more than five years prior to becoming a U.S. tax resident, 
then even the income generated by the trust is going to be free of U.S. tax as long as the trust's income doesn't include any U.S. income. If it did, the U.S. part of the income would be subject to U.S. taxes. The problem, because there's a special rule that if somebody sets up a foreign trust and becomes a U.S. tax resident within five years of having transferred assets to that trust, then they're treated as the owner of those assets for income tax purposes and they'll be liable for income taxes on the trust's income. The assets in the trust are still outside of their estate, so they're still saving on the U.S. gift and estate taxes, but they have to pay income taxes on the trust income. If the drop-off trust is set up more than five years prior to the person becoming a U.S. resident or domiciliary, though, then the income of the trust is not attributed to them, and that, too, would be outside of uh, uh, U.S. taxation. The problem is a lot of people don't know five years in advance that they're going to become a U.S. resident, and so they don't think of setting up a drop-off trust. Now, if you do prudent planning and you just have a trust anyway, then it may qualify as a drop-off trust if it was set up more than five years in advance. But even if, if, if you don't have a trust and you become a U.S. resident, it's still worth looking at a drop-off trust to at least save on the gift and estate taxes. So just to recap, if assets are transferred to a drop-off trust more than five years before the person becomes a U.S. tax resident or domiciliary, the, the assets in the trust will not be subject to U.S. transfer taxes, meaning gift and estate taxes, and also the income generated by the trust will not be subject to U.S. income taxes so long as there is no U.S. income. If there is U.S. income, only the U.S. income is going to be subject to U.S. income taxes. If the assets are transferred to the drop-off trust less than five years become, before becoming a U.S. resident or domiciliary, then the assets are going to be shielded from U.S. transfer taxes, meaning gift and estate taxes, but the person who transferred the assets to the trust will be liable for income tax on the income generated by the assets put to the uh, transferred to the trust, and that's worldwide income, not just U.S. income. So a couple of uh, uh, tax considerations for setting up a drop-off trust. A uh, drop-off trust can be either a grantor trust or a non-grantor trust. If it was set up within this five-year window, it's going to be a grantor trust uh, for U.S. income tax purposes. If it was set up at, uh, post or, or more than five years in advance, it will probably be a non-grantor trust. Um, it would need to be reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, dis distributions to U.S. beneficiaries from a foreign grantor trust are not subject to tax so long as certain filing requirements are met. Distributions from foreign non-grantor trusts to U.S. beneficiaries are generally partially uh, subject to U.S. tax. So the portion of the distribution that is attributed to the corpus, meaning the assets originally tr transferred to the trust, are not going to be taxable. Distributions of income are, and distributions of accumulated income, meaning income that was not distributed in prior years, is going to be subject to something called a throwback tax, which is essentially a punitive tax for accumulating income that can actually wipe out uh, a lot of the benefits of accumulating income in a foreign trust. So that's something that you definitely need to analyze when setting up a drop-off trust is how the beneficiaries are going to be taxed. And that's something that, you know, again, on a case-by-case -case basis, it's going to depend. Now, there is one sort of drop-off trust add-on strategy that exists that can shield the drop-off trust's income from U.S. taxation, even if set up within that five-year window, and that is private placement life insurance. Private placement life insurance uh, is essentially a, a, a whole life policy where you transfer assets into this uh, private placement life insurance policy. Generally, it's going to be a, a portfolio, and then that portfolio is professionally managed. Now, in order 
to have this strategy work successfully, the PPLI has to be US tax compliant, which means that it has to meet certain criteria and it has to be professionally managed. So you have to put your assets into the PPLI and then those assets need to be professionally managed by an independent third party. If you get involved in the management, it could jeopardize the tax advantages of the PPLI. Now, what are the tax advantages of the PPLI? The tax advantage of the PPLI is any income generated within the PPLI is not going to be subject to US tax, right? So let's say, for example, you transfer a large portfolio of, of let's just say you transfer cash, keep it simple, to a PPLI and you turn that over to a professional investment manager and that professional investment manager is doing a good job and the portfolio is generating income within the PPLI, the income that's being generated with that PPLI is gonna be free from US tax. Now, if the trust and the beneficiaries of the trust wanna access some of the PPLI money, they can borrow against the PPLI policy and because it's loan proceeds rather than income, that's not going to be tax free. And likewise, when the person whose life is insured dies and the PPLI pays out, that's going to be tax free life insurance proceeds. So the PPLI has some very big advantages, especially when combined with a drop off trust that is set up less than five years before becoming a US tax resident or domiciliary because you can keep the, the income as well as the assets uh, free of US taxation, both income and transfer taxes, meaning US gift and estate taxes. Uh, pro tip, uh, use a professional trustee, like I said. Uh, you need to be very careful when making distributions out of the drop-off trust to US beneficiaries because the US could view those distributions as giving the US beneficiary some type of ownership in the trust, which could have some negative tax advantages. So they're definitely, that's not to say that you can't make distributions to US beneficiaries. It just requires a little bit of planning and that you have a solid strategy for doing so. Obviously something that, that we can help with if you need it. If you have any questions about drop-off trust or pre-immigration planning, we're happy to help. Contact us uh, at info at esquiregroup.com or visit us at the, on the web at esquiregroup.com. Hope to see you in a later video. Bye.